that uh, gets the number of people that Telegram you know, has working for them. He says it's uh, 19 people, uh, 900 million subscribers and 19 people running the thing. Now, you know, if that sort of efficiency, how does an incumbent really compete? I think that's the point that in a way you are making that. Uh, advent of technology will create uh, its own uh, challenges for these very large incumbents. Yes. And uh, they will have to self-correct or uh, face a zombie status and get driven out. I want to move on to uh, uh, another fascinating story that you have uh, sketched. That is uh, Switzerland versus uh, uh, other European uh, socialist uh, states. Yes. I think I'm sure uh, our guests would love to hear uh, that and what differentiates and how that differentiation happened. And then, then, of course, there are some other stories, but first the European story. Yeah. So I have a chapter in the book on, you know, where capitalism is still working. And I start with the example of Switzerland, which I've spent some time in. I said, how is Switzerland the world's richest economy? It's the world's richest economy by per capita income. And how is Switzerland also among the five happiest countries in the world? Right? Because in the end, what do you want to be rich for? You want to be happy. So how do you be both rich and happy? And I cite the example of Switzerland, which is that their government spending as a share of GDP is much lower than other European countries. So the state is present. I'm not in favor of laissez-faire capitalism where there's no state. That's not practical. The state is present, but their government spending as a share of GDP is 35% lower than even America. So, and it's a very decentralized model. If you go to Switzerland, every canton in Switzerland does its own thing. So, and the regulatory environment is much lighter. So what I've tried to sketch in the book, I've said there are three countries where offer good examples of where capitalism is at least moving in the right direction. It's Switzerland, it's Taiwan is the other country I speak about, three countries across the income curve. It's a middle income country. And then I speak about Vietnam, going the China way of the 80s and 90s and stuff like that. And Taiwan is an exa interesting example because here is a country which was praised in the pandemic for being this great efficient state, handled the pandemic so well, their government spending as a share of GDP is just 20%, half that of America. So I'm trying to say that you have to, the idea here is that you have to build a state for the 21st century, which can be very tech savvy, and you don't have to keep on spending money to just get the results. France spends 60% of GDP, and yet if you go to France, it's one of the most inefficient states you'll, you'll deal with. So, uh, like Switzerland does 35% and Taiwan does 20% and the outcomes are much better. 